Now I read manga because I'm lazy and want to get through a story as quickly as possible and waiting two to four years between seasons. <laughs> no, 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 we just don't do that here. So being able to read most of a series in one night makes perfect sense for me. And most of those big series that got you and me here in the first place wouldn't exist without it, so you kind of have to respect it. Anyway, with that said, instead of making 10 individual videos on 10 different manga, I'm just going to share with you the 10 manga this year that I like and hopefully that you like too. As well as two wildcard picks at the end that didn't quite make it, but they're still pretty good. Hi, my name's Ben and this one goes out to all of you translators and scanners. I know that nobody really says it, but... We love you. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Or is an off-the-wall story that's going to steal your dick and sell it to some aliens because that's exactly what it does. Coming from one of Fujimoto's former assistants, dun dun dun, brings in a blend of supernatural horror and sci-fi that makes it stand out from everything else that Shonen is pushing out right now. The story follows Ken and Momo, who are complete opposites. Ken is that stereotypical quiet school shit um, type of guy with no friends, spending most of his time reading alone at the back of the classroom. Momo then is one of the popular girls, but she completely spaces out and lives in her own world. Anyway, one day Momo protects Ken from some buddies, and she notices that he's reading a book about aliens. She calls him a nerd, claiming Oh no, that she exists! Only psychics and spirits exist! This then leads to the two fighting over what's more likely to be real, aliens or ghosts. Which then results in the two of them agreeing to visit some spots known about in urban legend. Ken gets ghosts, Momo gets aliens. And what the two of them end up encountering leaves you with the most what the fuck more I need more endings to a chapter that I read in a long fucking time. Because Ken ends up encountering the Turbo Granny who ends up stealing his dick and then gives him some powers. All while Momo then awakens her own ability during this bizarre alien abduction. And if that has made you at least some bit interested, then the art probably will, because Yukinobo Tatsu really draws all of these characters to make them look as horrific and disturbing as possible, with some of them looking like the type of monsters that would chase you up the stairs at night. Anyway, the story is about these two coming face to face with the supernatural in the most insane off the wall, how is this fucking shonen type of series. You can definitely tell that he's taken a lot of inspiration from working close to Chainsaw Man, because this really pushed the limit of what makes a modern shown it even further. It's crazy, Ken and Momo are a good combination. Some of the art looks like it's straight out of a Junji Ito story, but it all just works. It's got less than 20 chapters, so you should probably check it out before it blows up. A 10 year old boy lives with his single mother. Or at least he did. Because Kenshiro's mother has turned her back on family. You don't turn your back on family. Delivered her Yakuza boyfriend, leaving little Kenny to fend for himself. But Ken has decided that he's going to take revenge and kill the Yakuza that took his mother away. So to make sure he can, he undergoes an intense training regiment of reading Fist of the North Star so that he can learn about pressure points to kill. As well as getting absolutely sauced to his socks in the meantime. Then after years upon years of rigorous training and reading Fist of the North Star, the big day finally arrives where he encounters the Yakuza member. He's been training so hard for this and he gets his shit kicked in. So then with his knowledge of pressure points and his defeat he becomes a masseuse? <laughs> Kinchiro Niroshiku is a comedy revenge story where from reading Fist of the North Star Ken has become the most intense massage dude. The story follows Ken as an adult making his way up in the massage world so hopefully that one day he can get to a point where he can massage that Yakuza member to death. It goes through all the situations that he finds himself in as he does everything from rubbing people's backs to curing erectile dysfunction. The art is actually pretty anatomically acceptable. They look like real Japanese people, which makes everything feel that bit more mature. It's a comedy I like for how intense but innocent Kenshiro is because deep down he's just another gym bro that can't understand his emotions. Actually, speaking of gym bros, Marshall is a direct sequel to Mob Psycho where Mob has spent a lot of time with the Body Improvement Club and now he is an absolute unit. I'm sorry, that was actually a complete lie. But that's what you would think, because while on the surface, Marshall looks like it takes a lot of influence from Mob and One Punch Man, what it really is is this parody comedy series focused around this guy called Ma Marsh. Marsh lives in a world of magic, whereby the amount of lines on a person's face indicates how powerful they are. And if you have none, well, you're getting deported. Marsh has no magic, but he can bench four plates on either side for reps and has a crippling addiction to cream puffs. Both under the threat of being trialed as a person with no magic, Marsh is forced to enroll in Easton Academy. It's not Hogwarts, but it's basically the same. Where he is to work to the very top of the food chain to become a divine visionary, in hope that he can then change the laws for those that are born without magic. It parodies Harry Potter a fuck ton, but it does it well. The side characters are pretty much your standard copy and paste shown in side characters, except for these two, they're fucking crazy. But you're 
here for the comedy and that's what it does best. If you like Mob One Punch Man and Harry Potter, then this takes all the best parts of each of them and brings it all together to deliver a comedy manga that is blowing up in Shonen Jump right now and is probably going to have an anime in 2022. Now, the art can be really basic, but it can also hit you with an uppercut to the chin and give you these super duper detailed panels where it feels like there's shit moving around inside of them. Very cool, very swag, I like it. Mm, thanks James, I like it as well and you could too, so check it out. Kaiju number 8 in issue was a series that I looked at and thought it was just another one of those something goes into the main character and turns them into a monster type of series that hasn't been done before. But it's kind of not, and I take that back because with it recently moving to releasing a chapter every two weeks, I'm kind of missing it now. It takes place in a Japan that every day is under attack from these immensely powerful monsters that can wipe out half a city in one swipe. The story follows Kafka, who like most shonen protagonists is in his late 20s, has failed to achieve any of his dreams, is working a job that he absolutely hates, and is unable to make it even into the army. Which means he's actually a relatable shonen protagonist. Anyway, that thing happens where the author decides to put something inside of him, and now he's able to transform into a monster. Shh, you can't tell anyone yet. The series basically follows him as he tries to break into the defense forces after so many failed attempts, as he tries to follow the dreams that he never could. And while the series itself has a fuck ton of shonen tropes, Kafka is able to set a completely different tone in the story as the main character because he's just lived longer and knows more shit about life. This and that blend of the extra extra relatability just makes it hit in this way that's different to other series, even if we've seen the concept a few times. Also, the community is really blown up around this one, with a lot of people taking it upon themselves to create their own color versions of the manga that just looks absolutely insane. It's a good shonen with really good hype shonen moments that I'm liking more and more. Some crazy looking weapons, characters and great art and an MC that doesn't really scream too much so check it out on one of those manga websites that's completely legal and completely safe. Or just read it online for free. We're going to change the pace up here a little bit. You know what? Just take your shoes off and relax because right here we have that manga equivalent of that 2am summer breeze that just hits. Insomniacs after school is a slice of life follow Nakami who has insomnia. One day Nakami is searching the school for some cardboard for the school festival when he walks into the abandoned astronomy tower where he happens to wake up Magali who's also a fellow insomniac. The two then realize that they both suffer and agree that they can use this room as their own personal safe space for sleep which then also prompts them to restart the astronomy club. There is this different vibe that I get from just reading this series. It's simple, aesthetic, wholesome and it's just fucking real. The characters have actual problems and feel like real people and there's also these panels of the environment they're in where it feels like you can hear everything that's going on inside of them. I read the first 20 chapters of it in about an hour and it was just a relaxing read and a nice change from your standard shonen. And I love how simple and detailed the art can be and how it just makes you forget. And honestly it's probably my second favourite manga this year just based off of vibes alone. If you want something that's a break from whatever else you're reading then check this one out. One of the best things about sports manga is that when they're done right they can deliver pace and intensity that only they can really do. Now some of them will be completely faithful to the sport while others will add some of their own flavour to try and enhance the entire experience. Meaning that for some enthusiasts of that sport well some just won't enjoy it. And in that case just watch the fucking sport. Yes I know it's been out since 2018 but it's just that good. Blue Lock is an actual football manga. No not hand egg not Texas testicle but an actual football manga. Isaki is a striker does not seem to have any real future in the sport until he receives a letter inviting him among 300 other strikers to participate in the blue lock as Japan tries to find the best striker in the country in hopes of winning a world cup with all of this being coordinated by Jinpachi Ego. The facility is like a prison everyone is made to wear the same uniform everything they own is taken away from them and off the bat they're put against each other as their places in the camp are at risk every single day with only the very best surviving with Ego shouting across the intercom every single day trying to manipulate them to become his ideal player. This all results in intense matches, constant infighting, massive egos and manipulation, creating a football manga that basically says fuck you to the conventional ways that players should act, and focus on delivering the best story that it can possibly deliver. Isagi, the main character even begins to get a chub anytime he sees someone cry. He actually starts to collect tears so that he can use them as lube for his boots because they're too small. The guy that did a jagan does this too, which means that you get panels that look like these and scenes that are straight intense, meaning that it's pretty good. Yeah, it does ignore every other position in the sport, but it makes sense because otherwise there would just be too much going on at the same time. It's basically a football battle royale, but you get distracted from the fact because there's so many other things going on inside of it. I read the first 20 chapters in one sitting, my leg went dead, and hopefully yours does too, so get on it. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like if Borderlands had a manga? Well, I 
don't have any of that, but this series is still pretty good. Set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where the rich live their lives safely behind these gigantic walls, keeping them from danger. And while the rest of us live in the slums where absolutely anything goes. Rebuild World follows a street orphan named Akira. Akira has nothing and no one, but he has come to realize that the only way that he can get out of the slums is by venturing into the wastelands in search of ancient relics and old age technology, with the plan to sell these back to the little hype beasts in the area and eventually become a registered hunter, so that he can make even more money risking his life in the wastelands doing the exact same thing, but this time it's legal. His first time entering the wastelands doesn't exactly go too well. He walks around a corner and gets ganged up on by some low level bandits, but then Akira starts freaking out because in front of him he sees a naked woman, who then tells him to run into this building in front of him in 5 seconds, otherwise he's dead. He then later learns that her name is Alpha, an AI that has existed since the old world and is able to tune directly into Akira's mind and only his mind. Being invisible to the rest of the world and being able to provide him with information on threats, relics and just about everything else around him. The two of them enter a contract and begin to work together, exploring more and more of the world throughout the story with the stakes being raised each and every time and we see Akira change more and more as the story progresses. The world in this story is pretty sick because it grows to have multiple narratives running at once, from inner city gang violence to nearly inescapable encounters in the wastelands. So mix all of this with some pretty good art, a rootless and overpowered MC, and then you have an interesting series that's also nice to look at. If you were forced to live through the same day over and over, would you look for a way out or just give up and live in this cycle? Coffee Moon is a sane and Piet has been stuck in a cycle of living the same day over and over, running through the rain and darkness for what seems to be well over a thousand days, constantly and constantly making the most minor changes to her day as she goes about trying to make it as perfect as can be, so she doesn't go insane. Only now her friends have seemed to be caught in that same cycle, so they will try and carry out different tasks to make changes to the day so they can try and escape. And I really can't say much more without giving away most of the plot, but what we do see is how Piesa slowly begins to lose control of herself and her sanity, or the little bit that she has left, as she keeps running away from from her problems and turning to comfort, which is something that just about anyone else would do. But this doesn't just involve Pieta anymore, as her friends now have to come face to face with the darkest parts of themselves and try and find a resolution to it. This is a pretty good series, with the strong points really coming and how it can make a character seem perfectly fine, while also appearing completely psychotic at that same time. In how the eyes are drawn to help and show just how crazy a character is, or how it sounds like you can hear the rain that falls throughout the entire city. It's a semi-mystery time loop type of story, so if Tokyo Revengers confuses you then you should probably skip it if not then check it out okay this for me yes me not for you but for me Oshinoko is the best thing that I've read this year Goro is just a regular doctor that takes care of his patients every single day and Serena a patient of his who is addicted to idols and one in particular being Hoshino Ai who she completely idolizes and aspires to be like it's all she wants and it's all that Goro wants for her anyway one day Goro is tasked with giving a girl an ultrasound only for it to turn out to be Ai who is now carrying fucking twins and Anyway, one thing leads to another and Gore wakes up dead. But you can't wake up dead. So he's just realized that he's been reincarnated as one of Ai's twins, along with the knowledge of everything that's happened in his past life. Now I understand if this is starting to sound like a baby isekai, but this series is so much more. Because the twins quickly grow up and become their own people, both deciding to get into the entertainment industry but for vastly different reasons. And it's from there where the story just really decides to come into its own. The story comes from the same guy that wrote Kaguya-sama and this time he goes deep deep into the dark side of the entertainment industry, from overwork to child exploitation, dangerous stalkers to being abused online to the brink of ending your own life, to being so terrified of the outside world that you wrap yourself up in your own work, only for it to then destroy you as a result. So when I say check this one out, I want you to take it as homework, read the first 10 chapters, yes the first 10, you'll know why when you do, and then report back here with what you think of it, because by then you'll most likely be hooked on this series. Okay so imagine Tanjiro, now imagine Tanjiro with a shotgun, hunting down werewolves with this lottie that can actually switch into a six foot tall waifu who carries more weapons than your last Skyrim playthrough. Now I know that it's kind of early to be recommending or saying anything but the Hunter's Guild Red Hood is a shonen that's in the same vein as Demon Slayer but instead of sword fights and fisting we're running through these hugely obscene and grotesque looking werewolves with a shotgun and some 
explosives as Grim and Velu move to hunt down every single monster that they can find. Velu lives in a small village where all he wants to do is to become a hunter so that he can protect his home from werewolf attacks. But like most shonen main characters, he doesn't have a family. With the chief of the village, this big Santa looking motherfucker being the person that he aspires to be like the most. Yet this village is struggling to get by year by year as it becomes even harder to protect everyone from the outside and the monsters that threaten their life. So Santa decides to sell everything that he owns to call in a registered hunter to help him protect the area. And it looks like they get straight hustled because Grim, the hunter that they sent, is only a small girl. Then the village is attacked, the chief disappears, these nightmares werewolves show up and Grim has grown into a 6 foot tall, well it's probably more like 5 foot 11 and a half waifu. And with Velu is ready to take on any werewolf that attacks the hamlet by any means necessary. And now I know this sounds like your typical modern day shonen but it's the skin and the premise that make it sound so interesting and make you really think of how many places this could go. And the number of possibilities that there is for it because it can basically go and take any monster from any fairy tale that there is and just drop it into the story. The story and the art comes from one of Horikoshi's assistants and while you can see some similarities it's the entire aesthetic and the vibe that makes it feel so different. And the MC doesn't actually scream or cry that much and is actually able to pull the trigger without reflecting on whether or not his enemy was a good person. And Grimm's your favourite character so don't even try and argue about it. I like the characters, the premise and the entire vibe it just gives and it's only a couple of chapters in so start it now so you can brag about it when it gets big. So the two wildcard picks then are Sosa no Freerun and Fire Punch. Sosa no Freerun is a slice of life adventure series that's okay but it's just way too chill and slice of lifey for a top 10. Fire Punch then is insane and was written by the same author of Chainsaw Man being Tatsuki Fujimoto. And even though it finished publishing in 2018 there's always a good time to read Fire Punch. Anyway thanks for watching, like it, share it, print out every individual frame of it and create a manuscript and preach it to every single person you know. And subscribe because I have some really big things I want to make and put on and interacting with these videos will make them happen faster apparently. So... Bye.